Though Noah is known as the Burnout King, the madness is not without a method. In his win at Blink Respawn, there were moments of incredible discipline and resource management. Noah is in the corner and must gamble on a decision because the block string would burn him out with no meter, meaning a successful DI is likely to occur. If he bets on strictly ODDP during any gap, he puts himself in burnout, and although Noah is not opposed to that, he'd once again have no super to defend himself, and eating too much drive chip before trying parry means if it's not timed perfectly, he burns out. So Noah parries on the first gap available. Of course, he could have been punished counter thrown for this, but blocking results in burnout anyway. What parrying here does is allow Noah to recover in time to take the throw if there's no Jinrai follow up, but also that same tap parry locks Noah into absorbing the Jinrai, which gives him an entire bar of drive, allowing the guaranteed ODDP post Jinrai to happen with no burnout. That sets the stage for Noah to have drive left and respond with his own DI to claim the momentum. Next, Noah is once again knocked down in the corner with another decision to make. A properly timed DI can only be escaped using level 1 super, but let's look at that situation. He would then be below 1 meter, half of burnout to go through, and be at a life deficit. This situation is still unfavorable, and I recreated the final round to see how much meter was built. Starting from 1 meter, which is around where Noah most likely would have ended up, he doesn't actually build to level 3, falling short of the win. The discipline to hold back in that moment and decision to go into the final round with full capabilities paid off on the road to qualifying for Capcom Cup. But now let's explore the method to the madness with three topics. The methodology behind when Noah goes into burnout, the utilization of forward moving options and the reaction advantage, and the aggressive nature of his high pressure decision making. Noah definitely puts himself in burnout more than any other high level player, but doing this means he's always the one applying pressure at the start of burnout. This lets him not only recover from burnout faster because of the chunks you build back when making contact with the opponent, but it also can result in chip damage to the opponent's drive meter, punish counters that drain the drive, or of course supers. This combination of recovering faster while also draining the opponent's drive means that Noah often has a huge drive meter advantage once recovered from burnout. And in case things go wrong, Noah almost always has meter in his pocket when he puts himself into burnout, making sure he can't be checkmated by a DI in the corner. In addition, Noah is just extremely good at reading people when he's in burnout. One of the things I've really liked about burnout from the beginning of the game is that though it restricts the player in burnout, it often makes the person not in burnout easier to read. The non-burnout player wants to exploit the tools that are really strong against burnout, a lot of which is character specific, but the universal tool people love to utilize is of course drive impact. Noah is one of the best players in the world at reading and countering DIs in burnout. He'll bait the opponent into doing it with Flash Knuckle into level 3, Raw React with Super, aggressively throw the option, jump back and get a huge punish. This methodology also extends to when he's very low on drive gauge and knows his opponent is going to want to do something that burns him out. He often beats people to the button in these instances. Noah's effectiveness on the ground comes from utilizing the forward movement of Luke's various options and how he exploits the reaction advantage these moments give him. Whiff punishing takes a lot of dedicated brain power to pull off consistently. Being able to calculate the range and react with the proper option against moves where the total duration is only 15 to 30 frames is extremely difficult. Now if you choose not to press a button or just don't react, you're normally still at a mid type range against the opponent where you can feel comfortable proceeding with multiple options because the opponent is not in your face. But with forward advancing options, you're no longer at a mid range after it whiffs. The characters are in each other's faces and this is where the reaction advantage comes into play. While you're spinning processing power discerning the range, option to respond with, and what move Noah has done, Noah already knows what move he chose and because of that, he knows before the opponent how that button is going to play out from that range, giving him the upper hand and reacting in the moment. From this spot, the button is going to whiff unless the opponent presses a button into it, so he's ready with a follow up and the opponent is counter hit because Noah has already game planned for the whiff, while the opponent is recognizing what's happening in real time, giving them a slight disadvantage on the reaction action game. Noah also plans for those buttons getting pressed into as well, even on trades we saw a DP response work out multiple times during Blink Respawn Top 8. Not to say this is a perfect strategy, as locked in players have shown the initial whiff is punishable, but it is extremely difficult to react to if not scouted. Another hallmark of his play is the confidence in his high pressure decision making and strategy to put the onus on the opponent to respond when the game's on the line. 
In round 3 of game 1 against Crime A at Blink Respawn, Noah looks to force a response when he DIs in the corner. If Crime A responds with super or a DI of his own, Noah is at a significant disadvantage, but this constant pressure and forcing decisions to be made under duress can overwhelm opponents, so we see the drive reversal in this instance just to gain some breathing room. Even when looking to bait out options, Noah does a lot of neutral jump or forward jump to bait out reversals so that if the reversal doesn't happen, most of the time the opponent ends up blocking the jump in and he can continue to immediately apply pressure. He looked to the strategy to seal his victory at Blink Respawn with a significant lead in the round and the overall game and set advantage. Noah knew all the pressure was on his opponent and turned that pressure up even further by drive impacting, meaning the opponent either answers or as we witnessed, the victory would be secured.